Good evening. It's great to be able to have you join us for this week's prayer meeting, already the last one of the month. And uh, well, it's been a very interesting month to see how the country and the town and also our own families and lives have adjusted to what has been the last full month of lockdown and uh, as things now open up. And I trust tonight it's going to be a, a season of our hearts opening up this coming weekend is Pentecost Sunday and our theme is actually going to reflect on that tonight as we look at the Holy Spirit as the one who comes to refresh uh, and uh, give us this water to drink from in order that we will know life and life in all its fullness. So we're praying for the refreshing water of the Holy Spirit. It's a couple of verses just to begin as we open in prayer. Isaiah 12 verse 3, Therefore you will draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. John 4.14, we're going to hear this one a couple of times. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst, Jesus said. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. And then in John 7, 36, 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Let's pray together. Fathers, we come into your house tonight, even though we may be in our homes and we may be in front of screens, we're coming into the dwelling place of God. And we thank you that, Lord, not only are we surrounded by your presence, but above us is the opportunity to drink from the refreshing streams of your grace. And so we ask that as we meditate and, and pray and study regarding the Holy Spirit as that refreshing stream, that we will be filled to overflowing with the measure of your goodness and your grace and so guide us in this time together in jesus name amen and we're going to sing right now a, a song that reflects on the theme that we have this evening let your living water flow over my soul let your Holy Spirit come and take control Every situation that has troubled my mind All my cares and burdens onto you I roll Jesus Spirit 
Yes, we really need that living water. And uh, Paul writes to the church in Corinth, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. And there's the link between the Holy Spirit and the concept of water. Uh, I believe that, you know, in today's world, there are a lot of folk who try to live out a Christian life without the Holy Spirit or dismiss the work of the Holy Spirit for today. Uh, I don't know where that leaves them uh, with Pentecost Sunday coming up on Sunday, uh, but and I don't know where it would leave them if they were walking in a desert without water, because effectively that's what you do if you try to live out uh, any life, let alone the Christian life, without accessing the working of the Holy Spirit from within. We're all dependent on the work of the Spirit. And over the course of these coming months, we're going to obviously make room to allow the Holy Spirit to do so much more in each of our hearts and lives. And I would encourage you that if it's not necessarily part of your tradition and part of, uh, of your background, uh, that you recognize that at least the working of the Spirit is critical to even coming to Christ. And hence, day by day, post giving our lives to Christ, we can access something of his strength, of his gifting, of his enablement and his empowerment to live out the lives that he means us to live for the glory of God. So Evan's going to come and read to us now a, a great passage from John chapter 4 about the woman at the well. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be with you tonight. So let's start reading from John chapter 4. Uh, now he had gone, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sichar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a, Samar a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. 
Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah uh, called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Great. Thanks very much for, for sharing that, Evelyn. Thank you, Evie. Uh, and, you know, that communication that Jesus had with a woman at the well is a communication in some part for each of us uh, tonight. He put himself in the place where he could meet with her and initially began that conversation by putting himself in a place of need in order to release to her the truth of what she really needed. Uh, and prayer and this prayer meeting is an opportunity for that two-way communication. I'm going to just begin playing a piece of music that will help us in meditating and listening and praying quietly in our hearts to the Lord tonight. And we have here this reading from John 7 verses 37 to 39. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But he spoke, he, this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now he has raised, been raised to life, he has ascended into heaven, and on this coming Sunday we will remember again the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And so that river is there for you tonight, that from your innermost being, rivers of living water can flow freely. And so in this time, just invite him, invite him to pour afresh upon your heart. Sure. 
Well, uh, I hope you were able to focus in on prayer as well, maybe as looking at some of those uh, visuals of the, the water in various ways cascading. But most important that you felt that cascading of the living water upon possibly a dry and weary soul, because we live in a real world where we get drained and we need to come daily to the to the source to our supply. And we want to pray right now for those who aren't aware of that of that resource. And sadly, in today's world, with all the troubles and uncertainties, there are so many who are currently shut off to that wellspring of life. And in Jeremiah 17, verse 13, we read, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even the Lord. And for those who haven't received Christ, they don't know life. Those who have the Son have life. Those who don't have the Son do not have life. The scriptures make it very clear. And so your neighbours around you, in the streets around you, you know, trying to do their best, yes. And, you know, we respect um, uh, all that they do do. But without Christ, there is a spiritual thirst that can't be satisfied elsewhere. And I want us to look outward to those within our local communities as we pray right now for those who are literally dying of spiritual thirst. Lord, we thank you for your amazing faithfulness in being willing to meet with us day by day and for the difference it makes to our spirits, to our lives, that we can know of that refreshing in you. But, oh God, right now in this prayer meeting, we focus on those around us, in our places of work, in our neighbourhoods, in our streets, in the block of flats where we live. Wherever we are, we pray for those who don't know of that refreshing water who don't know what it is to have that thirst quenched by the one who daily, freely gives us a, of a supply that meets the deepest of needs. And we ask, O oh God, that in this season, as uh, lockdown ends in Switzerland and as things are loosened up around the world, that this will yet be a time when so many turn their hearts towards you. And we pray, Lord, for this coming weekend, at Pentecost weekend, uh, that there shall be some beginnings of a fresh outpouring of your spirit, not just upon your church, but upon the nation. And so we ask, Lord, for those in our neighbourhoods, that something would prompt them, or you would even use us, to put a word in season in the right way that would open their hearts to all that you have come to bring. We recognize we are pilgrims in a barren land. And we thank you so much for the daily refreshing that you provide. May so many others receive that refreshing too. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as we continue in prayer, Evan's going to come and lead us in another aspect of prayer. Yes, we want to give an invite to the thirsty to come and drink. And I just want to read uh, those three scriptures that are on your screens. In John 4, 14, it says, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up from eternal life, uh, springing up to eternal life. And in Isaiah 55, verse 1, we read, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. 
Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. And in Isaiah 49.10, it says, They will not hunger or thirst, nor will the scorching heat or sun strike them down. For he who has compassion on them will lead them and will guide them to springs of water. Amazing promises if we choose wisely and rightly when we are thirsty uh, to go to the source that will give us eternal life. So Father God, we thank you that you are making the Holy Spirit available to us when we are thirsty, when we are hungry, when we are um, just desperate for your presence. You say, come and I will give you to drink. So I pray that in times where we are tired, exhausted, lonely, weary, when we find it difficult to make decisions as to where to draw our strength from, that we will fix our eyes on you, Jesus, and we will invite you that you would come and refresh us with your living waters. We thank you that you are so willing to give us as we come and seek you. Help us to be filled with your spirit. Help us to be filled with your water that will enable us uh, to keep going and to never thirst again because of eternal life in you. So we thank you for everything that you offer to us. And I just pray that we would ever be searching for you and not look in other places to fill the gaps or uh, drink from waters that will make us thirsty again. But we will choose wisely and come to you, our source of hope and eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As Evelyn was just uh, praying, you know, it's critical that our source isn't something that we seek elsewhere. Uh, he alone is or should be our heart's desire uh, and we long to worship him and the song that we're going to hear now and hopefully sing as a prayer this evening is one that would reflect that we want to be fully focused on the true source of all joy of all strength and of all happiness and, and, and uh, fulfillment and that is that river of God's grace. And as we sing this, as we pray into this, let's ask the Holy Spirit to identify in our lives if there are other sources we're drinking from that we shouldn't be and to make a decision to put those things aside.
this, Lord. You alone. Amen. And so we're going to come to just uh, highlighting verses that uh, give us seven facts regarding living water. And uh, then we would just pray into those as we would then draw towards a close. So Song of Songs 415, you are a garden spring, a well of fresh water and streams flowing from Lebanon. Well, the first thing we want to note is that the water issues from God's house. And in the Old Testament, we have these two verses, Joel chapter three, verse 18. And in that day, the mountains will drip with sweet wine and the hills will flow with milk and all the brooks of Judah will flow with water and a spring will go out from the house of the Lord to water the valley of Shittim. And Ezekiel 47 verse one, then he brought me back to the door of the house and behold, water was flowing from under the threshold of the house toward the east. For the house faced east and the water was flowing down from under, from under the right side of the house, from south of the altar. So the house of God, uh, that means there is the flow from heaven into our hearts and lives and through the house of God, the people of God, flows the water into the world around us. Uh, it's critical that we are that dwelling place through which the water can then touch the lives of many other. Oh God, revive your church, revive your church so that the nation can be revived through a revived church. The second thing makes it makes life fruitful. Revelation 22, one and two. Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and of the lamb in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. We read that verse a bit earlier on, but it makes life fruitful. Uh, and, and, you know, that is so critical uh, that we bear fruit, fruit that will last, uh, that goes on through our lifetime. And we're able to leave a legacy that touches the lives of others. Oh, Lord, we pray, enable us to be fruitful, to be significant, not just to be successful in what we do, but to be significant for your kingdom's purposes. Amen. And then the third uh, fact about the living water, there's a universal call to partake of it. Revelation 22, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come and let the one who hears say, come, let the one who is thirsty, come, let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. And there is that echo from the throne of heaven into the hearts and lives of society today to come and drink from that water all who thirst and that's for us to take out that invitation and so we pray lord enable us to be bold enough to be your witnesses of the truth of the gospel to invite others to come 
and drink of that supply for themselves. Lord, let's not walk around, as it were, with uh, a plentiful supply of water ourselves whilst our neighbour alongside us is dying in the street of thirst. And so equip us, oh Lord, equip us over these coming months, over these years, that we would be a people of God who know how to liberally and freely and joyfully offer living water to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. And then the fourth thing we read is that it's an inexhaustible supply. In Revelation 7, 17, for the lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. It's a, a dwelling place for the people of God, the wellspring of life that is there without end day by day. And it's also unaffected by time and season, Zechariah 14, 8. And in that day, living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the Eastern Sea and the other half towards the Western Sea. It'll be in summer as well as in winter. So Lord, we thank you for that inexhaustible supply, not affected by time or season. We realize in the world around us that there are many physical signs of drought uh, and hardship, and then the extreme on the other side with flooding. But Lord, spiritually, there is that steady, steadfast, ready supply in every season without fail. We thank you we can count on that supply of your grace and goodness. No matter how we feel, no matter what place we are in, no matter what season of our lives, we can always have our thirst quenched by the river of life. Amen. Then we read, it satisfies the deepest of needs. John 7, 37, 38. And on the last day, the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And, you know, we realize that we are always a thirsty people. It is a dry and barren land, we've said that. And as we've sung a bit earlier on in, in that song based on Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. It's because only in him are the deepest needs of our lives met. Not gold or silver satisfy, but the living God, the living water that flows from the heart of God to us. And then a final one, Christ is the source. John 4 verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you this living water. That was from the reading that Evelyn brought earlier on. And it is truly in Christ that we have our sufficiency in every way and lord we we thank you that uh it is not by any other god or by any other effort or by any other doctrine or by any other code of practice but by simply yielding to you and accepting your invitation like the woman did at the well and through your means through all that you came to bring can we receive that refreshing day by day amen and so we summarize with those points that i've just been praying into the holy spirit issues from the house of god it makes life fruitful it's there is a universal a call appeal to partake of it it is a supply that is inexhaustible unaffected by times and seasons 
It satisfies the deepest of needs. And Christ is the source of all of that into our hearts and lives. So we're going to come into a further time of intercession before we sing a final song together. And as you can see, I've uh, put a picture up on the screen. Uh, it is Etienne's brother, Pascal, who we've been praying earnestly for. And uh, this picture was taken from uh, a testimony that he was giving um, on, in a service at his home church in Canada. Uh, a man full of, of courage uh, and amazing strength in God. And I really am grateful for the way in which many have rallied around in ICL to pray for Etienne's brother Pascal. Um, and he certainly needs our ongoing prayers, which is why I want us to focus very specifically right now on this. Uh, Etienne wrote to me a couple of days ago and has given an update on the biopsy results that they have received. And he says this, my brother received his biopsy results, which confirms clearly the initial diagnosis, stage four aggressive pancreatic cancer. The mass is large enough that it has started to affect his liver. He will meet an oncologist for possible treatments, but from what he has been told, there isn't much modern medicine can do. We will continue to pray for healing, diminishing pain, peace and strength for his family and wisdom as he testifies to all his friends and contacts that the glory of God shines in these difficult times. And we certainly stand with Pascal and the family and would echo what Etienne is asking us to continue to pray into. We know that with the Holy Spirit, there are no limits to what God can do. And so I've got this picture of Pascal on the screen and would invite you just to, if you feel comfortable with that, uh, just reach your hand towards this uh, image of him as we pray for God to do the impossible in Pascal's life even as we pray tonight. And Lord, as we see our dear brother, uh, full of courage, full of trust, and yet also struggling with such pain and uncertainty, but trusting you and looking to you. And as the family believe that Oh God, you are the God of the miraculous. We would join with them tonight and pray for this mighty deliverance through the power of the Holy Spirit upon Pascal's life. Lord, with you, there is no such thing as too late. You can intervene. You can break through. You can rend the heavens and come down at any moment. And we pray, O oh God, that the prayer of righteous men and women around the world, not just ICL, but there are so many others who are standing in prayer for miraculous intervention, that, Lord, you would hear from heaven and come down. That prayer would avail much as we seek you in all earnestness. And Lord, we place your hands of protection on that family and ask that as Pascal continues to testify to his hope and his longing and his trust in you, that you will do something beyond medical reason. For the honour of your name, we pray this. Amen. Amen. Now Evelyn's going to come and, and pray again into uh, areas for the church. Father God, we thank you for your church here in Lucerne. We thank you for ICL. We thank you for each member. We thank you for individuals. We thank you for families. We thank you that you have never left us during this time where we have not been able to meet together. 
uh, you have been with us alongside and helping us, protecting us, guiding and and um, just giving us every day what we had need of you. Uh, I thank you that you have been aware of every need that has been um, lift out there. Thank you for uh, uh, knowing when we have been lonely. Thank you that you have been with us when we have been feeling anxious. Thank you that you've never let us go when we have been worried or when we have been doubting. I thank you that you have been the one that have been bringing peace into circumstances that may have wanted to overwhelm us. And I thank you that you have been our Prince of Peace. Father, but you have also been with us and you have seen difficult circumstances that some of us uh, may have had to work through, Father, where we have uh, not been able to travel to loved ones, uh, where the separation has been so difficult, where others in our families have may not have been well and we have not been able to visit and to encourage and just to be close by. So I just uh, pray that you will continue, Father, to keep your hand over our family members who are not well in this moment in time. I pray that you will come and you will touch and you will make well. We pray for people that may have financial needs at this moment in time, uh, who are not feeling well physically, Father, uh, for people who have uh, other issues that are just very difficult to overcome at this moment in time, for those that may suffer silently. Father, will you step in and come and refresh us with your uh, water that we've been talking about tonight. Will you come and fill us afresh? We have need of you and we welcome you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And now just receive. Open your hearts to receive. Welcoming in the Holy Spirit.
live inside me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Just be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside me. Wonderful song and a great prayer that God honours as we seek him in that way. This uh, picture I took just this morning, um, I was amazed looking out of the window at the Pilatus Mountain to see these two rings uh, caused by the vapour trails of a couple of aircraft, but it looked to both Evelyn and I as, as a halo uh, over the top of the mountain and I put this verse the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him uh, for me it's uh, something of uh, a prophetic statement a desire longing to see his rule over our city uh, that there would be that resting place of the angels of heaven over and above uh, the heavenlies in this place so I wanted to share that picture with you. Isn't that great? Well, um, notices for the theme on Sundays we continue with David is David the releaser. And uh, more will be explained on Sunday regarding that. I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, we will continue on further week, at least online on Sundays. Uh, and then, as you may have heard me mention on Sunday, we are looking and aiming at the 14th of June as the opportunity to get back. But uh, we're having different management meetings and discussions over that at this current time. And we'll keep you clearly informed and let you know for sure when that will be. Um, now, regarding the Wednesdays, we're going to make a switch as lockdown begins to open up. And as from next Wednesday, we won't be doing this type of uh, online meeting, but we will open the church uh, for those who want to come for a prayer meeting, stroke Bible study, on the Wednesday evening. It'll be 7.30, note the time, 7.30. And we will also put in a WebEx link so that anyone who can't travel can join us remotely and still be part of that prayer meeting. Uh, just following the slide is the uh, WebEx link that you will get. Uh, and uh, I will send you an email. If you write to the church, uh, pastor at icl.ch, saying you want a link for the WebEx meeting, I will make sure you get sent that so that you can join us 
uh, at 7.30 next Wednesday. Also on the website, we'll make sure there is a short video clip to guide you how you can download the uh, WebEx app so that you can have that available on your phone. So that'll be changes for next Wednesday. Sundays, however, continue this week and next week. Uh, and uh, the earliest will be the 14th that we meet up together on a Sunday. Okay, continue to pray as we seek God for wisdom in all these matters. That's the, the how the link will look. It will say, as you can see on the screen, 6.30 uh, Dublin Edinburgh time. Um, unfortunately, because of my computer, it shows a UK time, but don't get confused, that's 7.30 Swiss time. Uh, and you'll be able to click on where it says join meeting, it will be a green button and that says all you need to do, you will be then in on the meeting. So please make sure you send me your email address if you want to be part of that. Okay, we're going to conclude by referring back to this global opportunity for prayer, uh, United 714. Uh, and for this week, we are focusing in on a couple of readings and then Evan's going to pray the prayer that has been given for this particular week. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And from Isaiah 61, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the place, places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And then from Isaiah 52, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And Acts 4.31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Thank you, Evelyn. Lord Jesus, thank you for planting us in your Father's kingdom. Through your great salvation, we have received the righteousness, peace and joy. We need to thrive in the midst of our trial and tumult currently shaking our world. We ask that your divine peace will settle over our broken world and supernatural grace will sustain those who have suffered great loss during this pandemic. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we ask you to release your peace into our world to replace the panic. Release your comfort to alleviate the grief and sorrow in the hurting hearts of mankind. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are also thankful for your promise to rebuild, repair and raise up broken and ruined places. You are filled with compassion for the struggle of humanity. We are confident your heart has been moved by the devastation wrought by COVID-19. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we ask you to eradicate this virus, provide supernaturally for the many affected and heal shattered hearts worldwide. Lord, wherever your kingdom is proclaimed and established, there is healing. As we approach Pentecost Sunday, we ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your church and the world we have been called to reach. Grant us the boldness we need to clearly proclaim your word with power and confidence. Lord, send a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit to embolden us powerfully, to powerfully proclaim the message of the gospel. We pray in this name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Evie. And, uh, you know, our time is up. Um, I will just play the track, uh, Shout to the Lord, as we conclude. And I want to thank you for being with us again this evening. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week.
See.